Hello guys, welcome to JJK Master Class. Guys, today we are going to learn about octant rule and alpha exhale halo ketone rule, which is very important to find out the configuration of cyclohexane derivatives, especially chiral cyclohexane derivatives. And this topic you can find in the MSc Chemistry syllabus uh, under Advanced Institute Chemistry Unit. So you can prepare the topic uh, with respect to the type of questions here comes in your paper. So we will start with the first question where they will ask state the octant rule how it is useful to determine the absolute configuration of substituted decalones and cholesterols. So this question is from your previous year MSc question paper. And uh, since it comes around like 4 to 5 marks category, you have to first define what is octant rule. And then they are asking uh, the absolute configuration of the decalone and cholesterol. You have to take one one example of each. So we will see first what is octant rule. So basically this octant rule is for the correlation of the cotton effect of the chiral cyclohexanone with their absolute configuration. So here you will be having a carbonyl group which is divided into the space around it into 8 sectors. Therefore, it is called octant. So with the help of 3 orthogonal planes A, B and C. You can see here the planes A is with respect to X, Y axis, B is for Z, Y axis and the plane C is with respect to X, Z axis. And so you can see here the vertical plane A which is bisecting this cyclohexane ring or chair and uh, the horizontal plane which is B which contains this carbonyl group and C2 and C6 carbon and so this space is uh, divided into four quadrants which is you can see uh, is represented like this called upper left, upper right, lower left and lower right. So this is the quadrant figure which is uh, represented by uh, plus minus minus plus. And we will be seeing here A represent the axial groups and E represent the equatorial groups. You can see here with respect to this chromophoric group carbonyl oxygen, you have one vertical plane that is A and with respect to your C2 and C6 uh, along with this chromophoric group, the plane B which is a horizontal plane. So like this, uh, if this question comes uh, regarding any molecule, cyclohexane derivative, chiral molecule, you have to draw this quadrant diagram and then we will see how to find out the value of uh, cotton effect. And uh, mostly they will give you, suggest the uh, configuration of the respective molecule which gives you positive cotton effect. So like this is the experimental data which will come and they will give you and you have to find out based on that what is the correct configuration. So we will see how to do that. So you can uh, see this figure, we will see what is the contribution regarding the different sectors towards the cotton effect. First, you can see the substituent lying on the coordinate plane. Coordinate planes means you have plane A and plane B here. So, whatever substituents are falling on these planes will contribute negligible. Means we will ignore these groups. Like you can see here with respect to plane A, you have equatorial group uh, on the fourth carbon and on this uh, horizontal plane you have carbon 2 and carbon 3, you have two groups E and E, equatorial groups, which falls on this plane. So basically all these three equatorial groups, if it is present on the carbon 2, 6 or 4 respectively, the contribution towards cotton effect will be ignored. Okay, But it will be there for the axial because the axial group does not fall on any plane. Right. So this is the first uh, contribution. Now, the substituent lying in the positive sector, like you have upper left and lower right, which is a positive sector, make a positive contribution. Means if any substituent is present like uh, on uh, C5 or you have on C2, that will contribute towards positive cotton effect. And if any substituent is present in negative sector, that is upper right and lower left, then it will contribute towards negative cotton effect. Means if any substituent is present on carbon 3, that is axial or equatorial, or if it is present on carbon 6, that is axial, will contribute towards negative cotton effect. So this is the next uh, rule under this. And then finally, the axial substituent which is present at carbon 2 and 6, this is uh, axial, both are axial, 
which is closer to the chromophoric group that is the carbonyl group so carbon 2 and carbon 6 uh, substituent which are axial very near to chromophoric group will contribute strongly or more towards the cotton effect so if it is c6 axial group it will contribute towards negative cotton effect strongly and if it is c2 axial it will contribute towards positive cotton effect so if you have a comparison like uh, one group is present at C3 and other is present at C2. So like both are opposite, one is positive, other is negative. So to which we will uh, favor that is or which will contribute more that is the group which is present at carbon 2 will contribute more. And so it will show a positive cotton effect. Now we will see the example as they have asked in the question decalone. So we have taken an example here trans 10 methyl 2 decalone. So you can see here trans decalone means 10 member cyclohexane ring and trans because the methyl and hydrogen at the junction it is opposite to each other. So and the methyl group is at 10th uh, carbon. So trans 10 methyl. 2 decalone 2 you can see the numbering 1 2 the carbonyl position is at 2 so it is trans 10 methyl 2 decalone now we have to find out uh, like uh, if they ask you find out the suitable configuration which gives you a positive cotton effect they may ask uh, this kind of question for uh, trans 10 methyl 2 decalone so let's see we have drawn this structure and one important point here that the carbonyl group whenever you draw the confirmation it should always uh, be on the top towards the uh, observer or the head of the uh, plane or closer to the observer. So basically the carbonyl group should be above the plane. And so now we will draw the quadrant diagram here with respect to the chromophoric oxygen. So we will write first oxygen here. We will start the diagram with respect to oxygen and then you are seeing from the carbonyl oxygen you are standing here let's see you are viewing the molecule from the carbonyl then the c1 will come to your left hand side and c3 will come to your right hand side so similarly with respect to the chromophoric oxygen you write on the right hand side c3 and then one on the left hand side then this one carbon is attached to the nine carbon in the figure you can see so we have written nine in connection with one and then C3 is connected to C4. So we have written C3 is connected to C4. And just opposite to the carbonyl oxygen, you have carbon 10. So therefore, we have just written just above to oxygen 10 carbon, which is having a methyl group. And it is connected to carbon 9 and 4. So you can see in this figure, we have written like this. Similarly, you have to connect uh, and write down uh, the quadrant for the next ring. So, you can notice here the C9 is attached to C8. So, we have written that C8 and C10 is connected to C5. So, C10 is connected to C5. C5 is connected to C6 which is just opposite to 9. You can see in the figure. So, C9 and C6 are just opposite. And then C8 is also connected to C7. You can notice which is connected to C6. So, like this we have drawn this diagram and uh, you can see we have one vertical plane with respect to the chromophoric group. On um, this plane, you have carbon 10 and carbon uh, 5. So, the methyl group is falling on this plane. So, it means uh, it will not contribute towards the cotton effect. We have to ignore it. And another plane is with respect to the chromophoric group with, which has carbon 1 and carbon 3. Plane B, horizontal plane. And uh, as of now, we don't have any group on this. So, it will not or also not contribute towards the cotton effect. Now, how to find out then? If you notice with respect to this plus minus minus plus sector, the ring, the hydrocarbon ring is towards the positive sector. If you notice the B sector, we have divided it into A ring and B ring. So, the B ring is falling towards the positive sector. And so, we can say that this particular configuration is showing a positive cotton effect. So, it is a correct configuration for the respective molecule. If you draw a mirror image of it, just mirror image in enchumer of it, that will show a negative cotton effect. And if they ask a question separately that uh, find out the configuration of trans 10 methyl 2 decalone which gives you a positive cotton effect, then this is the correct configuration of your molecule. So like that, uh, this soft end rule is very helpful to find out the configuration of the 
chiral cyclohexanone. Another example is there in your question which is uh, for cholesterol. So we have taken one example for 3 cholesterol and uh, you can see uh, the structure is having 4 rings here, 3 cyclohexane ring, 1 uh, uh, 5 member ring and the ring A was first ring is having a carbonyl group at the third position. So we will say this is 3 cholesterol. You have two methyl group here, one is carbon uh, 10 and another is carbon 13. And you have one substituent presented carbon 17 here. So this is, if you write down the confirmation of this uh, in the same form, carbonyl, uh, you have written the chair confirmation where the carbonyl group is down. And uh, down the plane. So as we know, uh, with respect to the octane rule, the carbonyl group should look upward direction. So we will uh, draw this uh, and we will flip this ring where the carbonyl group will come in the upward direction. So you can see now here carbonyl is upward and we have just flipped done the flipping of the ring and now with respect to this we will draw the quadrant diagram as we have done in case of decalone. So you can see here uh, we will look always from the carbonyl group uh, you can give oxygen here. And with respect to that, carbon 4 will come on your left and carbon 2 will come on your right. And so, in the same manner, you draw this uh, entire uh, uh, rings uh, or quadrant for each ring respectively. And now, you can see there are two planes. One is plane A, other is plane B. The group which are present on plane A, that is C13-methyl, C10-methyl will not contribute towards cotton effect. So, we will ignore it. Now, again, you can see the carbon skeleton, the rings uh, quadrant is uh, majorly falls towards the positive sector as you can notice here, ring B, ring uh, uh, B and uh, D towards the positive sector. So, this contribute towards the positive cotton effect. And so, if they ask you, draw and find out the correct configuration of the 3 cholesterone which gives you positive cotton effect you can draw this respective confirmation. And if they ask you negative, then you have to just draw the mirror image of it. That will be the correct um, configuration of the molecule. So like this, you can find out the configuration of the chiral cyclohexanone with the help of octant diagram. Next rule is alpha axial ketone rule. And they are asking here how this rule is used to determine the absolute configuration of one trans decalone which is exhibited a positive cotton effect on bromination. So you have a trans decalone on which you are doing the bromination and the product is giving you the positive cotton effect. So you have to find out the configuration of the product. So let's see, uh, we will take uh, here, uh, you have cyclohexanone at the alpha position, carbonyl group, uh, the next carbon position to it uh, is called alpha. So, at axial position, you have a halo group. So, that is called uh, alpha axial halo ketone. Since we have to first discuss about this rule, so we will see this. Observe uh, the carbonyl group from the top, as you can see here in the figure. And then you can see that uh, this rule is basically applied where the axial halogen is present next to the ketone group in the cyclohexane moiety. So that is a requirement uh, to have the or uh, to apply this alpha axial ketone rule. Next, uh, you have to see the carbonyl group uh, which is placed at the head of the chair or it may be a boat uh, which is near to the observer. Then uh, you can see if the halogen appears uh, from the observer's uh, uh, right hand side, as you can see here in this figure then it will show a positive cotton effect and if it is uh, you can see on the left hand side to the observer then it will give you a negative cotton effect. So if you look at this uh, respective confirmation and you are viewing the molecule uh, from the carbonyl then you can see the position of X is on the right hand side of this observer and so this particular example which we have written will give a positive contribution towards a cotton effect. Next, you can also apply on this the octant rule where we will see, we will draw the quadrant diagram and find out. So, same way we are going to draw center, you can write the carbonyl chromophoric group. With respect to that, you have C2 and C6, same way you can draw plane A, plane B are there and you can see uh, the carbon 2. If you give one for the carbonyl, the next halogen is carbon 2. 
the x is axial axial position you know this is uh, near to the chromophore group uh, which falls in the positive sector so we can say that this respective conformation gives a positive cotton effect so you can also see uh, apply either you can uh, directly find out the position of halo group or if in such cases where you are not able to find out you can draw the quadrant diagram and find out the contribution towards the cotton effect now since they are asking the configuration of one trans take alone after like you are pursuing the chemical reaction on it we will see first the structure of one trans take alone take alone means you have two cyclohexane chair which is uh, like a position of the uh, junction uh, the hydrogen are trans to each other and you have a carbonyl group present into it so this is a configuration of uh, one trans take alone and then you are doing the bromination on it which gives you alpha halo that is alpha bromo cyclohexanone or uh, cyclo this uh, decalone product now you have to find out there are two possible conformation or configuration you can see here one is first a other is first b which is the correct configuration of your product after bromination you have to decide so if they Uh, in the question they have given that uh, the one which gives you a positive cotton effect is the product so now we'll see uh, your first structure 1a and if you are looking from the carbonyl oxygen the bromine is falling on the right hand side so basically the first structure should give you a positive cotton effect and if you look at the second configuration and you are looking from the carbonyl now the position of the bromine is uh, on the left hand side from the observers and so will give you a negative cotton effect now on the basis of the question like you can see the uh, the first a contribute the first a conformer or configuration is the correct configuration of your product because it gives you a positive cotton effect and since it gives you a positive cotton effect the configuration the absolute configuration of this molecule is s configuration if it gives negative negative cotton effect it is the r configuration and so you can find out the absolute configuration based on the cotton effect also cotton effect value so in this way you can find out the correct uh, configuration and absolute configuration of the chiral cyclohexanone derivatives and this is uh, how you can identify the correct configuration i hope you understood uh, uh, these uh, examples and if uh, the question comes of such kind in your exam i will uh, assume that uh, you can attempt it nicely and correctly all the best